In this presentation we're going to look at hexadecimal number conversion. And what I mean by that is converting from decimal to hexadecimal and likewise from hexadecimal to decimal. So the numbers we're going to uh, use as our example are express the decimal number 4591 as a hexadecimal number. Our second e example is express the hexadecimal number F5F1 as a decimal number. So I'm going to start off with the first example here and I have set up this table. So I'm going to uh, first off in the left hand side in the first row I'm going to put in my number there 4591. The second column is division by 16. I'm going to explain what, it, explain what that is in a minute. The quotient and remainder in, in decimal form and the remainder in hexadecimal form. So, uh, as an, a way, by way of explanation, I think what we, I will do is actually just start the example. So, the first thing we're going to do is divide 4591 by 16. And we would get 286.9375. Now, firstly, what we need is the quotient. And the quotient is the, the integer part of this number here. So it's 286. We disregard the 9375, but what we're going to do is use that for the remainder. So the remainder is actually 15, and that is computed as 0.9375 times 16. So these are the two numbers in particular we require, 286, 286, and 15. Lastly, what we're going to do is compute the hexadecimal equivalent of the remainder and the hexadecimal equivalent of 15 is F. So that's our first row done. What we're going to do now is move on to the second row and what we'll do here is bring down the quotient. So we bring down the quotient and that's going to be the number we use in the second row and what we're going to do is divide that by 16. We get 17.875 our quotient is the integer part of that number here, so we have 17. The remainder is 14, and again, that is not 0.875 times 16. That's not 0.875 there. And what we will do lastly is compute the hexadecimal equivalent of 14, which is E. Okay. Now we're going to bring down 17 again. I'm going to speed things up a bit. So I'm going to divide that by 16, 1.0625. The quotient is 1, and the remainder is 1. Again, that's not, point six, not, not point not 0.0625 times 16. The hexadecimal equivalent of 1 is simply 1. And bring down the quotient, 1. 1 divided by 16 is not point not 0.0625. The quotient part is zero, and we get to zero here, that means we're finished. We've no more row operations. So this is the last row we're going to work with. The remainder is one, and the hexadecimal equivalent of that is, again, one. So the answer we're looking for is the hexadecimal equivalent of 4591. And the answer to that is 11EF. And where that comes from is we're going to look at these remainder numbers here in reverse on reverse order 1 1 e and f so that is how we compute the hexadecimal equivalent uh, looking at those remainder numbers in reverse okay so that's the answer to the first part there the correct answer is 1 1 e f now the second part of this presentation is finding the hexadecimal number the equivalent the decimal equivalent of this hexadecimal number. So express the hexadecimal number F5, F1 as a decimal number. Okay, I'm going to use a table structure approach again. Now the reason for that is to make it as clear as possible, but uh, you might be you might not require to use the table approach uh, when you, with a bit of practice. So first off, what I'm going to do is in reverse order, I'm going to write out my hexits, which is the hexadecimal digits. So 1 is uh, the first one, because it's the in reverse order. 
from 1F, 5 and F. So 1F, 5 and F. Next, what I'm going to do is compute the decimal equivalent of these. So F is 15 and F is 15 there. 1 and 5 are simply 1 and 5. Now, what we're going to do is multiply by 0. We start with 0 as and not 1. 16 to the power of 0 is 1. 16 to the power of 1 is 16. 16 to the power of 2, 16 squared, is 256. And 16 cubed is 4096. Okay. And then we multiply the decimal equivalents by the weightings. So 1 times 1, 1. 15 times 16 is 240. 5 times 256 gives us 1280. And 15 times 4096, that gives us 61,440. Now, what we're going to do is simply add up all those numbers there. And our answer is 62,961. So the correct answer to the second example is 62,961.